time to uh, do the film advance components for this camera. Just casting my eyes around my table. Make sure I've got everything I need. And I don't, but we'll make do with what I've got. So the first thing I want to do is fit the advance, film advance shaft. Now I'm going to check this first because I said earlier that I was suspicious. Let's see if I can zoom in a bit. I was suspicious that perhaps the top of the shaft was twisted. It does look slightly twisted. Now, how a shaft comes to be twisted like that is an interesting puzzle. You have multiple components running on that shaft, but basically the ones we're concerned with here, I'll just zoom back out again, is this cam which controls, it's got a ratchet teeth on it, that controls the swing of your advanced lever, controls, make sure you move it forward to the end of the stroke before it releases and will come back again. It has another cam on the other surface which means that once the lever starts to move back towards the park position it can only move in that, that direction, it can't be pushed forward again until it's completed its stroke. So we have this cam is driven, it's got a square hole in the middle, it's driven by the shaft here and on the top of this shaft we have our film advance lever with a square hole in the middle. And if the top of the shaft is twisted, it means that the cam cannot rotate as far as it needs to if this component at the top has already reached a hard stop against the end of its travel. So what I'm looking at here is to see how much twist I think that component has in it. Whether it's significant and whether it would cause me a problem. I think that's probably okay. I've seen some that are quite noticeably twisted, uh, in which case I have to untwist them, which is a bit fraught. Basically, I have two components like this. One that can be set into the vise, and another one above it with flattened off sides that I can use a spanner on. And I fit the shaft in so that it's held firmly with the bottom one by the vise. Put the other component on the top and tw twist it back the other way to straighten the shaft. Generally that's been pretty good. Uh, the shaft here, there's not much meat left. That's quite a large threaded hole that runs down the middle. There is very little metal left around there. It's not particularly strong. So if the shaft breaks, that's where it's going to break. Likewise, if a camera has been dropped on its head at any stage, you can find that this shaft is bent. If it's been dropped on its head and the film advance lever strikes the ground first, it can push over and bend the shaft. In which case, you'll probably notice that looking from the top of the camera, that the lever doesn't swing through a smooth arc, it might wobble up and wobble back down again, even scuffing the top plate. But this, this looks good enough to use, so we're using it. So here I have some graphite grease. Now I'm looking at the state of the shaft here. At this point, I'll see if I can zoom you in a bit.
at this point where the bottom coil of the spring would sit, that brass shaft has got quite a pronounced groove in it. That suggests to me that the spring has had too much tension on it and this has managed to wear in over time, possibly with the help of a bit of dust to act as a, uh, an abrasive, but I suspect that the tension on this has been too high, that someone has wound up the tension on the return spring too high so that that spring was cutting tight into that shaft. There's nothing I can do about that short of replacing the shaft with another one. Um, with 60 year old cameras they've all got their little spots of uh, arthritis to deal with. So we'll just lubricate that well and I'll take pains not to make the same mistake that someone has previously made of cranking up that tension too high. Our rough spots on the shaft of course will make the rotation slightly rough. The action won't feel as smooth. That'll be fine. This is the steel, the nickel plated brass bush which goes in the bottom of the take up spool. Zoom you out a bit. So the bush goes into the plane hole at the end of that shaft, not the one with the slot in the top, and the bush goes to the base. Now by convention the slot in this piece goes to the end of the camera. And that should drop into the spool smoothly. Sometimes it catch because the spring may not be seated direct correctly into its position and you may need to fiddle about with that to get it right. But that one went smoothly enough. Three small screws hold this in place. And one of those screws took off across the room when I was taking the camera apart. And I carefully put it somewhere for later reassembly. <coughs> but I can't see it, so we'll hunt up a replacement for that one. The screw's very reluctant to go down there. As usual with something like this, get the screws started, but don't tighten them up until all three are in position. Let's see if I can find the missing screw. Most definitely wasn't put there. And it's not there. So, One from the spares is called for. That'll do nicely.
All right, three screws are in place. I'll do those up. Check that the advanced shaft rotates smooth. <coughs> Excuse me, smoothly, and it does. I can pop the sprocket shaft in place and the film sprocket. So I'll apply a little bit of grease to the shaft. The sprocket doesn't turn on the shaft. It, uh, the shaft must be free to move up and down and rotate in the body itself. The sprocket is driven by a screw here in that slot so that the sprocket never rotates on the shaft. The whole shaft and sprocket move as a unit. The shaft can move up and down depending on how you whether you press in the film rewind button or not at the bottom of the camera. When you press in the film rewind button it lifts this gear out of contact with the gear on the top of the camera and so frees up and allows the camera to rewind. Let's just uh, pop that shaft into place. On the Retina 1A and 2A the shaft can be put in at this stage. On the Retina 2C types that shaft can only be put in after all the tops assembled. If I find the correct screw for this, which is like the ones that were used for the hinge pins for the front door, there's a slightly longer threaded section and I think a slightly shorter head section. Now, it might be very similar. On later cameras, on 3C types, the screws here and at the door hinge pins were the same. On the 2As they were slightly different. Right, well that's in place. I'll just open the front of the camera to make it prop itself up. This lever is the catch. Let's tuck that out of the way. This lever is the catch for the rewind. So I'll put a little bit of molybdenum there on the head of it, where it contacts these arms. And the job of those arms, of course, is to release the rewind lever when you advance the film so that it springs back into its rest position. Here's the return spring and there is a shoulder screw It holds all that in place. So the large diameter, diameter closer to the head is where the spring runs. The next section is where it runs through the lever. And then you're down to the threaded diameter in the hole. That's in position. I can nip that up and hook the spring across. That's it. So in that position, that's the position it would be in 
Let's see if I can zoom you in a bit. That's the position the arm would be in if the rewind button had been pressed in. As the advance is rotated, it will swing the lever out of the way and the return spring on the rewind button would allow the rewind to pop that back up out of position, back into like that again and at that stage the gear would be engaged and the advance would move the sprocket. That's good so I think the rewind button would be a handy thing at this stage. <coughs> There's our film rewind button. That has quite a stiff return spring and a heavy washer. I'll put a little bit of grease around the shaft of that where it runs through the spring. Pop the spring in place. Pop the washer in place. and screw that to the end of the sprocket shaft. That's it, and it requires just a touch of the pliers to tighten that up. I'll just tighten that up. That's fine. Doesn't need much to nip that up tight. So, we have our components in at the base of the camera there now. The tripod socket can go on. There are three screws for that. They're usually fairly easy to pick out from the others because they will have the remains of glue on them. And since these screws are hidden under the leather at the base of the camera, if any screws of this size are but ugly in appearance. Now it's the perfect time to hide them at the base of the camera so that the pretty ones can remain at the top of the camera where they're more likely to be seen. So having said that, the only person who will ever see them will not be the camera owner unless they're also servicing the camera themselves. Right, let's nip those three screws up tight. That tripod socket is nice and tight. This little guard for the rewind button goes on there. And it's two brass screws. These brass screws are normally a source of corrosion and Zeiss bumps. In this case they weren't, but we do know that somebody else had had the leather off the base of the camera and so that would explain that. Alright, that looks quite good. At this stage I think it would be a perfect time to glue that leather back down and then uh, the bottom of the camera is finished with. Here I'll start by 
wiping the base of the camera with a bit of cigarette lighter fluid naphtha to remove any oil and grease I've managed to apply to it while I've been handling the camera and likewise I'll do the leather in the same way I'm just having a quick look to see if there are any loose flakes of leather I want to remove but that looks pretty good some adhesive this stuff is designed for doing things like rubber and leather things like that it's uh, particularly good it's designed as a contact adhesive actually but I don't use it as a contact adhesive so I'll just spread some on that leather and I will use a toothpick to make sure that's spread out evenly over all the surface particularly the edges um, that not particularly prone to problems in that regard but on these cameras but generally with leatherettes you have to be careful to get the, the adhesive right to the edges otherwise they can sometimes curl up and uh, it looks unsightly I'm just making sure that that leather is all pressed down firmly and I'm watching that part across here which was where we had quite a pronounced line last time from someone's previous repair effort and I was hoping that it would, that line might disappear um, it's still visible. I suppose it's there's a, probably extra glue at that point. That leather is probably stretched and fixed in that position. Never mind. At least we didn't make it any worse. Now the surround for the tripod socket should be here somewhere. Oh, it's hiding. Okay. and it's two screws these screws are chrome brass quite small easily damaged and they are not exactly the same as the ones on the Retina 2C and 3C cameras they are shorter than that and if you were to take one of the ones from the later cameras and insert them in here in one position they would actually block the action of the movement and so uh, you have to be they won't work as a substitute or they will for one position but not for the other that's it that's the base of the camera closed up the rewind button should click into place if I rotate the advanced lever it should pop back again that's all good now the film advance at the top of the camera can be reassembled alright time to assemble the uh, film advance components for the top of the camera we'll start with the clutch the clutch's job is to allow some slippage between the take-up spool and the take-up film advance sprocket and that is so that as the film builds up on the take-up spool and the diameter increases and the amount of film pulled through the camera would increase with each stroke leading to a different difference in advance length difference in the 
length of film advanced by the sprocket and by the spool and that difference would manifest as torn out sprocket holes so there's allowance for some slippage and the clutch is what does that I've just assembled that I've used graphite grease in there I found that to be best for this application pop that into place the clutch engages with the slots in the top of the plastic film spool, take up spool just checking that it's falling down into place correctly yes it is the central piece here serves multiple purposes the guide bush for the film advance shaft it has gears on it gear sets here to couple the mechanism the teeth on this inner piece will couple with the sprocket here and that in turn will uh, drive that take up spool get that on there and check that it seats correctly it has to engage with the gear on the top of the sprocket shaft too there are three screws holding this in place they're the same size as the screws that held the tripod socket to the base of the camera and usually you can recognize which three they were because they will not have any glue on the top of them and the threads are normally show signs of grease and oil from being in this application where there is grease in close proximity so I'll just check again that these components move smoothly and they do here is the gear it fits on the top of that shaft and I've just put a little bit of grease around the center of that Now there's a little pawl that goes here, a ratchet pawl which prevents the film advance from backing up, ensuring that it only travels in one direction. And if that wasn't present, you would have uneven film sp spacing. As the film may return to the film cassette depending on the tension I struck a problem recently where the spring on this component had come unhooked on a camera that I just finished servicing and as a result the loose end of the spring became trapped in the shutter release mechanism and the camera wouldn't function correctly but it only happened intermittently it was a bit of a hard one to spot let's hook that spring into place tighten that screw I'll revolve that you'll see the action as I zoom in you 
should be able to see the action of that ratchet how this gear can only rotate in one direction the clutch in the film advance mechanism allows the spool to rotate backwards when you rewind the film but the shaft itself that gear that gear cannot rotate backwards Alright, we have this drive dial, its job is to advance the film at the end of the stroke and it drops into a fixed position each time. I'll just put a smear of grease in here and what it needs is a little smear there's a spring on the top that keeps this little drive dog in place now this lever I want to be careful not to over tension the film advance on this particular camera because we think that made for rough action of the movement so I'll position it just there the drive gear fits on the top and a spacer sits on top of that this cam. We have the spring for this. It fits in this hole and I'll just lubricate that slightly with a little bit of molybdenum. I don't want that to be sticky, I want that to move freely so I'm just making sure I haven't put too much in there to make it gummy. That feels good. This piece is the guide for the shutter cocking rack. It also couples the film advance to the shutter cocking rack so that when you swing the film advance, the shutter cocking rack draws forward and cocks the shutter or rotates the shaft, which in turn cocks the shutter. So this piece sits on the top making sure that arm is sitting underneath there correctly that's good and I have three screws one of the screws has the return spring on it for this arm the other two are plain not always easy to get this particular one in position up but I haven't tightened it up it's a spring here I just sit in place there is a screw with a shoulder to allow that spring to move, that goes in here, check that that spring is free, it is, do up that screw and the other two that hold that rack guide bracket firmly down in place, this spring needs to be lifted over 
behind this lever and allow that lever to pop back up that's good you can see the action there see how it pushes that lever out in contact with the gear now our start position for the film advance would be at that point I'll pop this lever on if we press the shutter release I'm checking the action of the movement making sure that it moves smoothly no undue rough spots it's not unusual for there to be a spot of roughness sometimes in this action there's a lot of small gears there they can be easily distorted if a little piece of metal or grit or something gets in there and the action can be less than smooth it's not always a serious problem it's more of a minor annoyance um, obviously replacing the parts might make that run very smoothly indeed in this case it certainly works smoothly enough that's good that action works well and I will fit the shutter cocking rack the shutter cocking rack here is very robust on the Retina 2A it's quite a thick section of metal um, and so the cross section of the teeth is nice and deep and these aren't prone to damage unlike their later cameras where they used a thinner section of metal to make their racks on these cameras the racks are I wouldn't say that they were indestructible but I don't recall the last time I had to change one and this can fit into its position now if I can get it to slide in that's better so I rotate my film advance to the limit of its action at that point this will and allow it to revolve back it will capture that rack I'm just looking there at the relative position of the two to see if I want to move it in another tooth yeah that suits me better so you can see the rack moves backwards and forwards with the film advance see if I zoom you out a bit I think you saw none of that See the rack here moving out. That's good. Right, so that film advance is good. The rack is coupled, it's all in place, everything looks fine. I'm going to re finish assembling that film advance just so we've got it there for testing purposes. I'll pop the camera to one side, gather these pieces together. All right, so I'll assemble. components for the top of the film advance lever normally I put a smear of grease over that gear this is you can regard it as assembly grease it's to stick these two components together so they're not falling apart while I'm trying to get everything in the camera the grease serves no practical function after that only there just to help stick things together so they stay where they're put now this piece here normally has a scratch across it to indicate where 
which way around this piece fits. The scratch normally indicates where the number, the side number one would be on. I can see a scratch there, it doesn't look like as deep or as positive as they normally are, so I'm just checking. No, that's right, because the cutout in here, that little cutout, that's the end of film cutout, that should be opposite, on the opposite side, I think it's about, about 25 or so on the counter. Oh, that looks good. And pop that in place on there. And the wavy washer, should have a little bit of grease on it. Here we have the counter pawl or spring and I just put a tiny bit of grease on there. That pops into position on the lever at that point. And this assembly pops on, on top of that lever and I'm rotating the dial clockwise until I hear it click into place. Now you've got two ratchet actions going on there. One is for the counter pull or spring and that is the lighter of the two actions. There's a heavier ratchet action that you feel there which just suddenly drops into position as you rotate that dial and that is for the end of film notch it comes in when the thing reaches number one so now I'm just swinging the advance checking it and I'll zoom in a bit more I'm particularly interested in watching the action of this dog here as it revolves around comes to the gap at this point and then pops up this is at the end of the advanced stroke and I'm watching to see that it's got plenty of room to do that yes that, that does move freely and that there wasn't any significant problem with twist in the advanced shaft if there'd been a problem with twist in the advance shaft, we'd end up in a situation where the lever reaches the end of its stroke and can no, no, move no further forward, but this cam had not rotated far enough to release this lever here. That's good. I'm also taking notice at the moment of the strength of the return spring on that advance it has more than sufficient <coughs> spring to return it to the park position properly so that's a good choice it's certainly not over tight and I was worried about it being over tight because clearly it had been previously over tight and that had caused that roughness on the bottom of the advance shaft the action here is smooth there's quite a pronounced click at the end of the stroke as it advances the frame counter one position. 